Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what... I was going to say what I've been working on in the craft room this week, but let's face it, what tote bags I've been working on this week. I did finish the dog totes, and they are listed in my shop if you haven't already seen them. Got the green handle for the bottom of the bag and the blue handle to match the novelty print. Two different green linings. I'd like to tell you I was trying a new place for my tag, but the reality is, is I forgot to put it on the bag. I'd put it on this bag when I'd started making them one day, and then I came back into the studio the next day to record the video for how to turn your bag, the really quick short video for how to turn the bag through a zippered pocket, and I completely forgot that I needed to put tags on. I was too invested and involved with making the tutorial and making it concise and yet still be coherent that I forgot to put the tags in the bag. So two of them have them up here. I've also decided that I don't really care for them on the side. I'm not sure I like this type of tag up there. I only put the zipper pockets in with the little bones. I did not put a slip pocket in, but I definitely like the idea of putting the tags when you put a slip pocket. I'm going to try putting them in the lining next and see how I like that. Just a little experimenting to see different places and different ways to make things and little tweaks. Once you find what you enjoy making, you can just tweak things just a little bit to make them work the way you want. Green tassel. Apparently I only had one doggy paw print and I have like 15 cat charms. So it was really weird. So I put the heart one on here. Thought that one was sweet green to match the lining. You guys have seen these plenty of times, two different handles, one with the fabric, one with the blue. Here's the two linings. This guy has nice blue tassel and the heart. With the arrow going through it, it says love on the bottom. This time I just have them hanging from the jump rings with the tassel. puppy prints. I decided to just randomly alternate whether the zipper's on the right hand side or the left hand side. That way there's a good variety. I get to keep my brain functioning by changing things up a little bit yet still doing things the same. Too much change is too much for Robin but little things are good. Tags on the side. I like the colored base. This is the one with all of the different colors thread. I stuck with the green thread on this one. I also just spaced these out. I took a hair marker. For those that you don't know, a hair marker is just basically like this little plastic. I think they might have wooden ones also. You lay a ruler down and you can run this across it and puts a little crease in the fabric. So instead of marking it with pens or pencils or tape or anything like that, you can just follow a crease. I don't need perfection for these lines but I just kind of want to have a guideline to make it a little easier. So when I'm splitting it up and I'm stitching it, I don't end up with large empty, well, they're not even large, but you see how there's some empty spaces there compared to there. And also when I sew on a straight line, I sew and I sew and I come down to a funnel every darn time. So I just want to make sure that I'm not having too many of those by just drawing the lines with the hair marker. So I let these be a little bit further apart. Same thing with this one. I drew the hair marker lines an inch apart on them, and then I put just a line going down the center in between. There's the plaid Scotties, and this one has the orange on the inside. I love having those bright colors in there. So this one had a doggy bone. I did have a dog bone, which was nice. And the orange tassel with the zipper on the left. Here's the other one that I have my tag up there. I could stitch it down 
on the top and the bottom so that it's not a floppy tag but that's that would be a different tag and these are made to be this way so that they hang I'll try it down a little bit further. The reason I haven't put it in the lining is when you've seen me do the linings where I start out at the top that it has a 3H3. When I sew the lining at the beginning top parts here, it's 3 eighths of an inch on my seam allowance. And then I go ahead and I make my seam a little bit larger somewhere. It's more than a half an inch and less than three quarters of an inch, but I've never really measured it. So if I'm going like this and then I'm gonna start sewing in, I don't really know exactly where to put the tag. So I just pay attention a little bit more. Maybe I'll make the exact seam allowance go down pretty far so that I have room to put my tag here and then I can start narrowing it in. And for those of you that haven't watched my videos or maybe you're new to the channel, the reason I make a wider seam allowance on my lining is so that I don't have a super baggy lining. I know it's a little bit difficult to see in there, but I don't have a lot of loose lining on the sides and towards the bottom. It's a really good technique to use, especially when you're making like a zipper pouch. If anyone's interested, all three of them are in my shop. My Etsy shop is linked down below in the description box. Plus there's other kinds of information down there if you're ever curious about anything. Each Christmas, I'd like to send out a holiday themed fabric postcard to my patron members. Christmas is coming pretty close. Mailing time for Christmas is coming even closer. So in preparation to that, I did cut a bunch of batting scraps for fabric postcards. My fabric postcards end up being four and a half by six and a half. So I like to cut these about four and three quarters by six and three quarters or all the way up to the next size, like five by seven. My goal was to have at least 50. I think I probably cut more like 60 or 70 of them, but that'll give me plenty to have on hand for when I'm in the mood for making fabric postcards later on. I also cut some batting for some Quilt As You Go zipper pouches, just for two. I thought if I only cut the batting for two, which means four pieces, that would keep me from trying to make too many at the same time. That still leaves me a decent amount of scraps, plus all of the ones that I saved that are smaller than maybe three inches, for uh, two or three inches, that I can cut down to three quarters of an inch for my handles on my tote bags. So these, these are my larger pieces. I cut all of my smaller ones for the fabric postcards. I do have some smaller pieces at the bottom that need to be stitched together. But I thought for now, since I didn't have to cut into any of my large pieces, I only went for the pieces that were close to five by seven. And I saved the larger ones to be stitched together either for larger mug rugs, or I can use them and stitch them together for my tote bags, table runners, whatever you want to work on. So that's really great. I don't go as in depth of using every bit of my scraps as some people do. I do have a couple videos, one recently on how to sew these together. I do love a good Franken piece batting. Just Get It Done Quilts has a video where she goes really in depth into what you can do with all of your scraps, all the way down to even cutting them up with your rotary cutter into little tiny pieces to use for stuffing and pin cushions and toys and stuff like that. I do tend to throw mine away when they get to a certain shorter length and width. I don't use them for stuffing. That is just a little bit too much for me. I really prefer the actual stuffing that you use for stuffed animals and stuff. I like how I can fluff it up a little bit better. I have used polyester, 100% polyester batting in the past, that really high loft stuff. I don't like to use it for quilting type projects, so I do shred that up since I have it on hand. It was given to me by one of my old neighbors, so I don't want to just toss that away. So I will fluff it all up and shred it by hand and use it to stuff pin cushions and such. That I don't mind, but this I've tried using the batting before and I just, I just don't like the way it feels. But you can check out her video. She has a lot of really great ideas for using up your batting scraps. I also worked on a couple, well, I have three new cards here, scrappy cards. I wanted to try something different. This is definitely not a, a Robin original. I'm sure that many people have done this in the past, 
but I wanted to try making a card with a larger piece of fabric and just put heat and bond behind it to see how it does. I'm going to send some of these out to my patrons so that they can test them out to see how they do in the mail. Whenever I come up with something like this when I first made the cards and stuff, I send them out to my patrons all around the world and just locally here in the U.S. so that they can see how they go through the mail. They can send me a picture back and let me know how well they withstand maybe a child torturing it and if it's made it through the mail, fine, if the envelope didn't fall apart. When I first started making envelopes, I was really concerned about them falling apart. I did try doing the heat and bond and then stitching around it just to make sure it stayed down. But I still, I know a lot of people do it, but I just don't like that look. I have a couple of other ideas, so I just wanna see if it'll work with just plain heat and bond. Now look at this card, isn't this beautiful? See that little shimmer of gold dust that's got all over it? And it's great because it's part of the fabric. It's not like glitter that's gonna come off. I love this card. I'm sending it out to a patron, but someone sent me a couple of scraps of this type of fabric and I wanna see if I have some more just like this because I need to make something and just frame it for myself just because I love how it looks. And it doesn't need to make a big piece of fabric or anything like that or a big project to just add that little bit of an oomph on your, I don't have a mantle or anything like that so it probably end up getting hung on my wall in the hallway, but I just like the look of it and I think that's great for fall. I want to make some more fall and Christmas cards, but first I need to pick up some extra holiday themed paper. I really liked the Christmas one before. It was super thin and I wouldn't use it for many things, but it was great to line the envelopes. So I want to check out on Amazon and pick up some more of that and then see if they have any fall themed ones so that I can use at this time of year because we're really coming into the fall. People are starting to get some cooler temperatures. Florida had what they call a Florida cold front, which means it was a cold front in the upper states. And as it came down, it dropped our temperatures from 92 to like 84 or something like that. So it's really not a cold front because it didn't make it cold down here, but it did affect our temperatures. So once we start, whoops, once we start throwing cards around, once we start seeing those temperatures change like that, we get all excited down here because the really heat, September, August and September are really, really hot. So once we start seeing those cooler temps, then we start thinking about opening up our windows and then people start going out for walks and riding bikes. And there's more people out and about when we get into the Florida winter. My goal this past weekend was to get two of the Quilt As You Go zipper pouches done. I did this one as a music theme. I received some of this music scraps. I've combined it with some that I had. Another combination of mine and you guys' stuff. So it's really great when I can incorporate what you send me for scraps, which might not seem like you're gonna get very much with it. Someone was making a project where they'd sewn these two pieces together and these two pieces together. So I had to guess they're probably making some type of a musical quilt and those were the leftover pieces. So I scrounged through my other black and white scraps. I have not defuzzed this yet. That's the last thing I do before I take pictures to put it into the shop is hit it with a lint roller and make sure all the threads are off. Anywho, so it's really great when I can combine what I have on hand with what you guys send me. I went through my black and white bin and just separated all of these solid blacks out, which is what I used on the bottom. And that way, I got really tired of going in that black and white bin, that black with the, in the bin, there's white on black, black on white, and just solid blacks and blacks that just read as black. But I got tired of having to dig through all of the black scraps because I made a lot of black quilts with a, a, a bright color and the black background where a lot of people like to use white, I preferred to use black. And now I'm kind of into gray. So that, I guess that means if I make more quilts, my gray bin will get bigger, I don't know. So I just slid them inside into a separate container. So when I wanna have just straight solid black, I'll have it. And then I was able to easily see my other scraps and I knew I had some music notes in there so I pulled those out and then on the inside I had a fun fabric so if you look here you could see it says harmony and down there is do re mi fa there it is 
And then this side, I couldn't get another piece that was right side up, so this one has some sideways stuff. Well, with the white tassel, the black was just kind of blah on there, so that didn't work. And then I added the little musical symbol, black zipper. And then I knew I had some coffee scraps, so I decided I'm going to make a coffee one also. So here's the one side. Just did some fabrics. I went and quilted it this way, added some fabrics this way. So this one and this one match, and that matches. And I added the coffee beans down to the side. And then when you look out on this side, I had this really nice sized piece of the coffee pure roast. This, I'm guessing, is just coffee in a whole bunch of different languages. I was a little concerned about a zipper for this one because I thought I was going to have to use a black or a gray, which would have been fine. But I did have this light tan colored one coffee color tassel and I didn't have a coffee cup or anything like that so I went with a love charm on it because most people who drink coffee really really love it and on the inside I just went with a brown fabric not too dark and these bags aren't very big so I think it'll still be fine to see in there if it's a little bit darker I don't consider that brown to be a super dark color So both of those will also be in the shop by the time you see this video. So that's it for me this week. I feel like I had a very crafty week and I had a really good time working on what I did. So I think our code word for this video is going to be coffee. So you can let me know if you're a coffee drinker and if you want, you can tell me your favorite type of coffee drink. I'm not a really huge coffee drinker. I do have some in the winter, but I prefer a, a nice herbal tea in the winter, but I really do love an iced coffee. I don't like when my coffee gets cold, when it's meant to be hot, but I love an iced coffee. I think a lot of it is too because they're much sweeter and more creamier because coffee really isn't, it isn't my thing, but sometimes you just want a nice hot cup of coffee. I hope you guys were able to get into some type of crafty fun this week. I think everyone's back to school now at this point. I've been seeing a lot of different things on Instagram where the last bits of kids in the northern areas, I know a lot of times they wait until after Labor Day before they go back to school. We do tend to go pretty early here in the south. So that means everyone's going to be getting into their autumn and then their winter routines. And I know I don't like a strict schedule to know that at 11.15 I'm doing this, at 4.07 I'm doing that, things like that. But I do like to have a routine to know that on Sundays it's my day to completely relax. I wear whatever I want. I like to put a nice vanilla sugar cookie wax melt in. It makes my house smell really warm and refreshing with that sugar cookie scent. It only took me a little bit to realize, to get my brain to realize that, hey, it just smells nice in the house. You're not actually gonna get a sugar cookie today. On our live stream on Friday, we are going to be doing a mug rug. You may be able to figure out by the mess I've got going on here that I did find a mug rug pattern for us that we could do. One that I wanted something that had an autumn feel to. I love anything that is autumnal because we don't really have it down here in Florida. Everything stays green. So if I can find a pattern that has falling leaves in the different crackling. I do remember we moved down here when I was 13. So I do remember as a child having the rake leaves and how crackly they were when you walked on them and we did spend almost two years in upstate New York when Robbie was two so 20 years ago so I do remember the leaves and the snow from then so the colors and and how crisp and crackly they were under your feet this design is from the Crafty Quilter. I will put a link down below. I just want to make sure that anyone that wants to sew the actual project with us on Friday's live stream, that you have time to prepare your materials, collect your supplies, and figure out what you're going to do. I know many of you just like to hang out and chat, and also there's a large group of you that like to do other things while you're listening to us. Like maybe you have to do some hand stitching on a binding or you're ironing a lot of fabric or something like that. It's really great to have friends that are chatting in the background. It's almost like the friends are right there with you, keeping you company while you're doing something that's a little tedious and boring. I like to turn on longer YouTube videos when I fold laundry. 
So this is my the start of my sample. It's just a quilt as you go. Here's my fun backing. I thought the leaves would be nice with it. But we can also do this if you want to just sew your fabrics together or use one fabric on the background or something like that. Or maybe it's not the season for you that you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you're not getting ready to go into autumn and you wanna do some type of a beach scene. Either way, we're gonna do mug rugs. Whatever design you choose, if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna put a link down below. With the holidays coming up, it's great to use it yourself, to hang it on a wall as a mini decoration, to lay it on a table, or to give it as a gift. During the live stream, I'm going to show you how to do quilt as you go. We've done it so many times now. I'll show you the two versions and I'll show you also just how to sew them together. And maybe we'll talk about a couple of the little things that I've figured out when sewing such narrow strips together. So the pattern says that she used fabric that's at least an inch and three quarters wide. I did choose, well, I did kind of have a little issue with a small one on the end. That's okay, I can always trim that off. I wasn't sure how big I would need based on where my leaves went. So now that it's done, I'll probably just go ahead and take out the seam allowance here, just pick this one off and trim it up and then just make it a little bit smaller. But I used anything from an inch and a half all the way up to about two inches just to give some variance in sizes and widths and stuff like that. You just wanna make sure it's long enough to be as wide as you want for your mug rug. You could go diagonally, you could go horizontally and vertically, it's totally up to you. But if we're gonna base it right exactly as the author of the blog post has it, this is what it's going to look like. I still need to do my top stitching and sew everything down, but I also needed to get this video finished and up for you guys so that you would know what design we're gonna work on. So I hope you're able to join me this Friday, September 17th, 2021 at 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you need to know, I'm down in Florida, so you can base it off of that. I will put the actual tutorial of the shorter version of how to make this up Friday morning at 9 a.m. and then we'll go live in the afternoon. So I hope to see you guys on Friday. So thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you guys later on. Bye.